<laughs> okay, I just put, um, just so you guys know, I'm not a mortgage broker. That is, um, I'm just here to help you guys with the process with the clients. I just put an overview of whatever information you guys got today on the PowerPoint, which should be the first page. I did not include the, the options for the hard money lenders and the private money because I know most of the clients will find it a little bit hard at first, so don't don't tell him anything, don't tell them anything. It's just the regular options that we had before with BBVA, which is 35, 35 to fifty percent down and the minimum loan amount of a hundred thousand. And then we'll figure out the other options um, later on. Okay. So, f huh? Unless they want to do the private money, the the options he gave, which it was, I think it was C and D. Yes. Then it's <laughs> okay. Um, if they want to do a loan more than uh, less than a hundred thousand, then they have the private private money and harder money. For the pre-approval. Whenever you guys send me the clients the first time, make sure you send the email. It should be down here. Send the email to the client and me, um, and I'll, I'll send them the initial email asking for pre-approval documents and all that. You guys don't have to ask for anything. Just send me the client, and I'll take care of it with Ed. Okay, yeah, it's easier if you send the client directly to me and then I'll do the communication with Ed. Or if you have questions, you can call Ed directly, but it's probably easier if I talk to the client first and then he does because of the the language barrier. Yeah. The The question was if the client is looking for a property, what is the minimum loan amount? So it has to be a hundred and a hundred thousand dollars unless they want to do the private money. Then they can do which I think it was forty five for for the first option he had. So when you guys send me the client um, me, most of you are going to have seen the, the emails, the initial emails already, and you're going to see that what I asked for is the dream application, which is just basic info. Um, I just revised it with Ed. I added the information he needed. Um, most of you have gotten on the, the initial email already, the new one, which has um, a, few, a few questions about the, the visa, uh, properties, total properties that they have outside of the U.S., um, all the assets before we were only asking for bank statements for the the main checking account which was with BBVA they required only one bank account uh, for Ed he needs to see everything so whatever retirement investment checking savings whatever they have we need to show him for the pre-approval Yes. Always copied. No, the first email, the initial email, I always copy the realtor, not blind copy, the regular copy, just so you know that I'm in contact with them. After that, I'm either not going to copy you when there's personal documents, or if I do copy you on like follow ups or anything that I need from the clients, going to be BCC. Well, I'm trying with with the the whole thing going on now. I'm trying to do the updates every two weeks, so every you probably get an update every Friday, if not every week, every two weeks. If you need an update before that, send me an email. It's easier for you to send me an email than to call. I'm gonna be honest. So if you do call me, I don't answer. Leave me a voicemail. I will always return by the end of the day. Um, but emails are always the fastest way to to get a return. And I don't forget it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you should have the the cell phone, or most of you. But uh, I'll, it's four zero seven seven zero four 
0960. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you can call, but it's <laughs> it's going to be take longer than the email. <laughs> <laughs> you go to you go to Realtors Info, you go to Agents, right? And inside the Agents folder, there's a spreadsheet. The spreadsheet has multiple tabs. One of the tabs is what? The contacts. You go all the way because they're, they're split between Dream Properties, Dream Solutions, and Dream Designs, right? So you make sure that they're Is everybody aware that we're not Dream Consulting anymore? Is Dream Solutions? Everybody aware of that? Huh? No, no, no. I'm just making sure because I have gotten emails with uh, from from realtors to clients saying Dream Consulting. So it's Dream Solutions now. We changed it. So just make sure you you have that right before you tell the client. Okay. So for the pre-approval. Um, we put 24 to 72 hours. Ed has been pretty quick with, with it. It's usually 24, 48 hours. He has it. Um, so it's dream application, which I'll send to the client. The last 60 days of bank statements, investments, account, retirement, any assets they have, and the last two years of tax returns. So it would be 12 and 13 now because we're already at the end of April. Um, The communication. So instead of you Okay. What are the services offered? Um, whenever we do offer the service to the client, uh, which most of you guys always refer the client to me and then I do the, the introduction I talk to them about the services on all that it's the translation of the documents which now we're gonna need certified most of them um, the preparation of the documents notary services the communication services and the will that we include in the in the package so um, right now the Portuguese to English I'm doing it because I'm, I'm good at it but all the other languages have to be done through through somebody else but I can get it arranged any other languages we can get it done it's just extra cost because of getting a third party to do it I'm working on getting certified for the Portuguese to English and English to Portuguese so so that I can get done just the Spanish Chinese French whatever those languages we can get it arranged but it's not it's not gonna be done in-house Most of the banks, especially the ones that Ed um, presented to you guys, they require to be certified. So that's why I'm working on, on getting that done to make it easier on everybody and lower the costs. So it's no no extra cost for uh, for the notary certified translation. All that is all going to be included once I get the license done and I can do it in house. It's going to be included in the fee that we charge the client. But for now, we do have an extra charge to getting it certified. So if it needs to be certified, it'll it'll probably be around thirty dollars per page, and it's a, a maximum of six six pages. I counted the the files, and it's a maximum of six pages. This is just so you guys know. I'm going to tell the client everything. It's it add whatever I don't know the the questions for, which is the the loan part. It's going to be through Ed, but everything is just so you guys know, so you're aware of it in case you come across it. It's three percent of the financed amount if they're doing the whole process through us. If they're just using us for the documents, if they want to do with whatever other lender they have, then it's three thousand seven hundred ninety. Yes, it was 2% and we just raised it to 3 because it needs to be certified now and the costs go up, yeah. Up, up. 
and it's the purchase amount that they charge. It's not the financed amount. Just so you guys, this cost is not going to be on the hood. It's not part of closing costs. It's, it has nothing to do with it. It's an extra to help out the client with the process because they obviously do not speak English. They cannot communicate, most of them. So it makes it, it, makes it easier on them if, if we do it that way. They have the option of do it by themselves, but most of them don't, don't choose it. There is a contract. Yes, there's a contract between Dream Solutions and the client, which tells them the the days of the payments, um, what are they getting for the services, and uh, it states on that that we're not mortgage brokers. It has nothing to do with closing costs. It's just to help them with the documents itself. And they're aware of it. It says on the on the contract, it, I have it in English, and then there's a part in Portuguese for them to understand what they're signing. They're signing the English, but they're reading Portuguese. Um, I know that we're trying to see, I you know most of you guys are aware of the BBVA issue that we had. Uh, they changed everything from, from night to day. They changed everything. Um, so we're trying to get away from them so we're not only limited and stuck with, with them and, and run into issues at the end of the process. Uh, but there is some lenders that do not allow you to do it with, with other, I'm sorry, there's some builders that do not allow you to do with other lenders. I know that um, Beezer offers incentives if you do a BBVA or a new pen. Um, Lenar requires you to do one with one of their lenders as well. Um, yes, I don't know. Um, from what I've heard before, yeah. If, if you have extreme cases where they would not let you do it with anybody else, always try, always ask. Um, Beezer, I've gotten them to allow one loan to go through somebody else. Um, it still give the client the incentives for closing and the discounts. So if you do have one that needs to be done through BBVA, keep in mind we're not going to be, be able to help them with the communication, only the documents. So it will be the flat fee of $3,790 with the documents only. We cannot get in the middle. You cannot get in the middle of BBVA and the client. Otherwise, you're going to put the, the loan. Um, the loan will probably be denied if they find out you're in the middle. He's going to have to figure it out on his own. So he either wants the, the help with the communication, make it easier on him, or he wants the incentives. It's, it has to be one or the other if we can negotiate with the builder. Am I going to be the one helping them, um, letting them know of the information? No. Whenever you do sign the contract, they're going to let you know um, what are the preferred lenders. If they tell you, for example, Beezer, they just told one of the realtors, it has to be BBVA or New Pen, or we're not going to put the incentives in the contract. So they write down the lender information in the contract, and they did not negotiate with him. They said it has to be BBVA or New Pen, or it won't happen.
can sell it to you. The package will sell it to you. That's all we do in Denver. Um, the way we're doing through DPA, it's kind of like an end of the product. The reason you're paying this amount is because you're getting all the steps on how to do it. The only thing that you're not getting is VBA sends you an email to the client. Uh, Desiree is not in between them. Or Ed is not in between them. It's just the client with VBA. Does that make sense? I'm still going to give them the documents ready the way BBV requires the translations because now they require translations as well. It doesn't have to be certified but needs to be translated. Um, I'm still going to give them the steps on, on the initial email on disclosures and all that, like explain, because I have that saved, I have it in the format where it explains everything. Uh, they're just not going to be able to send me the, the email and be like, hey, help me with the translation for this. And then I answer, because it's too much work to do that. It's, it, do, it doesn't flow that way. So they're on their own with the communication. Yeah, they will deny the loan if they find out that any of us are in the middle of it. Not only Dream Properties, but all of the other real estate companies. Beezer has their preferred lenders, which is New Pen and BBVA. Um, New Pen, it's restricted on the properties. So if it's a vacation home, you're stuck with BBVA. No, no, no. With BBVA, the realtors cannot be involved. At all on the doc. If there's documents, if there's loan information, oh, the translating emails, you're fine. It's just you cannot have personal info for the loan or documents or anything like that. So be aware of that. Just don't reply to BBVA. Just don't don't get involved. Yes. That's why the clients, most of the clients, when we show them option A and B, even if it costs a little bit more with the B, they will go with us being in the middle of it. Because if they don't speak English, they don't understand anything, and BBVA calls you to ask for something, which they're doing now, they call the client, how are you going to respond to that if you don't know any English? They have Spanish, but clients still don't understand Spanish. They've tried with a couple. Now they have to do the first call whenever they submit the loan. They have to call the client. Uh, to welcome them and tell them the, the, the initial documents and all that. It's everything in English or Spanish over the phone. <laughs> and they're getting to a point now, BBVA was, uh, when we started working with them, it was fairly easy and it was, they work with us, um, the the loan officer we had, um, but right now they're up to I think three pages of documents that they need. So, how crazy so that's. Because of that, yeah. Now it's everyone. So they try to do it with us, but it it's everyone now. It's not only us. So it's just, just use that option if you have extreme cases where the builder wants it. And <laughs> The important things to remember, um, emails should be sent to me with copy to the client. The time to answer all emails are 24 to 48 hours. I have that on my auto reply. So if any of you send me an email, you're going to see it's 24 to 48 hours. I try my best to always answer the emails by the end of the day. So even if it's late, uh, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., I, I always try to answer the emails by the end of the day. Appointments should be made at least 24 hours in advance. Um, of course, if you have a client that is leaving the next day, came only to see the house and needs to make an appointment, even if it's after hours, I don't mind doing that. But keep in mind, it's just extreme cases if that happens because of 
the work we're having now with having to translate every single document and too many clients at one time I have to to make appointments in, in order to make it work uh, Skype and phone appointments it's gonna be every Wednesday and Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. so if you have a client that needs to talk to me over the phone or Skype you can do that no problem but I'm trying to do my best to keep it on Wednesdays and Fridays I know there's exceptions where clients have to talk to me after hour 7 8 o'clock at night because of the time difference um, or work or any other reason but try to keep it at Wednesday and Friday if you need me to talk to a client um, if you're buying, if your client's executing the contract, make sure he is pre-approved before. I've had problems with closing a contract, the, ex the contract's executed and the client's not pre-approved and it starts months later and it's just, it's too much of a hassle for everybody because then they have the risk of losing their deposit, they have all the contingencies of the contract, so it just makes sure he's pre-approved before anything else. If you have a client, once you have the executed contract, I know most of us do not do not read that. I didn't know that until a year ago. There's loan contingencies to the contract. So, for example, Zenodro, they have a 30-day, right? So, if if a client doesn't get pre doesn't get approved for the loan, the commitment letter within 30 days, they lose their deposit if they don't pay cash, if they don't close on the home. Park Square has their rules. Um, Lennar has theirs. So make sure you guys are aware of that and don't tell the client that no matter what, they're getting the deposit back. Because we've had issues with that. It doesn't work like that. It's usually 30 to 60 days. If they don't have a loan commitment, if they don't have um, a way of paying through private or hard money or whatever it is, they're going to have to pay cash or lose a deposit. Everybody good with that? Everybody understands that? Everybody knows that on the contracts. 30 to 60 days. Yes. What I would tell you to do is get one of the, the each contracts that we work the most, which is Park Square, Lennar, um, Zenodro. Read the contingencies of the contract so you understand and you can explain to the client. Because I've had multiple clients tell me, oh no, but I was told that no matter what, I would get my money back. It does not work like that. So just so we don't run into problems. Um, so this is just, just so you guys remember, it's on that checklist that I made, but it, what you need to send me once you have the, the client is going to 
purchase is pre-approved is good to go you need to send me the executed contract the title company info sellers agent info closing estimate at least a month I know we can they they don't give you a date they they're gonna say like it's either gonna be April or end of June something like that just an estimate um, and then the dream disclosure signed I always double check before closing before I send anything to 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 Ed or any other um, loan officers or mortgage brokers we work with if we have that in file so you guys don't run into problems later at closing but always make sure you send that to me beforehand just so we're safe Go ahead. That's your on your own with that one. The cash buying, you you just go. What I would tell you, it's go to the checklist and make sure you have everything. But you're on your own doing that. I only help them if they're doing the loan. <laughs> Well, for me, with my help, yeah. You would do basically what I do with Ed on the foreign, you would do it directly with him. You, the client, and Ed. Alrighty, and just to let you guys know, uh, as of today, my email changed to dreamsolutions.com, not dream properties anymore. That one doesn't exist. Yeah, it does not exist anymore. So, dreamsolutions.com, I'm going to be sending an email today to everybody, all the clients, um, to let them know. But it's always Dream Solutions now. And that's it. Any questions? No, I can do the. Tr I can find a way of can get the translation certified to from Spanish to English, English to Spanish. I just is still part of the same fee. Well, charges are gonna apply if um if it's any languages other than Portuguese, because of course I cannot do it myself. So it's gonna be thirty dollars per page, maximum of six six pages. Yeah. Every all the documents, I'll do the communication with the client. All the documents get done. I'll send it to Ed, and he does the loan part. Yes, I can. I can do that.
And just to make a note to that, every time I talk to a client, they ask me about that, I tell them, I'm not licensed to do a mortgage, uh, a loan. I only help you with the paperwork. So if you guys talk to a client, make sure to let them know it's not, I'm not a mortgage broker. It's not, it's just the document itself, the communication. So they don't have to go through a third party and find somebody in Brazil because we know it's way expensive to do over there, the translations and communication and all that. It's just a way of helping them out to make everything easier. One of the, the initial things that I, I wanted to talk about when we, when we were talking with, with, with Desiree is this pre-approval process. The pre-approval process is an extremely vague, vague, vague process. If I have a domestic borrower, I collect seven pieces of information, I can run a credit report on that. All that individual's debt payments populate my loan system. I ask them verbally or I ask them for W-2 at the meeting. I can get them pre-approved and be pretty darn close to exactly where I am because I know what their DTI is. I know what their incomes are. I'm documented. It doesn't work that way with the foreign nationals. Okay? I have no way of knowing really what the monthly expenses are. Some folks are paying taxes on their properties. Others don't. There's information that's there that I don't see. So the pre-approvals that, that I provide are are very, very vague. And it's specifically stated that it's based solely on the information that I have there. To take that to the next level is going to require whatever documentation, if any, we decide to go on with this. So it's a very different animal when you try to pre-approve a foreign national because you can't really gauge for sure where you are on the debt. And if you recall, I go back to those numbers that I was pointing out, the debt to incomes, 43% on A, 40% on B. It's virtually impossible for me to connect that because I'm looking at the tax return and I look at the bank statements and I can Google translate that. I'm getting pretty good. By the end of the summer, I'm going to be fluent in Portuguese. But there, there's a lot of cultural differences in money coming in and out of accounts. And it, it's hard to understand if that money's coming in is, is rental income that I'm not counting and I, I could be counting. It's all sorts of information like that. So it's very difficult, and that's why some of the numbers are really low. And unless we really get those, and A and B is going to require the certified translations to come over. If, if, if it's going to be difficult on those other issues, that's where C and D really come in, where we go to stated loans and we don't go through, through that whole nine yards. But... You've got DTI restrictions, debt to income restrictions on those on those original two that have the better rates, but it's 43 and 40 percent, and it's virtually impossible to go through the tax return and you know, that last page of the tax return I've become pretty intimate with, but it's really hard to figure out when, when you have rights and assets what of that number is really liquid. There could be one or two clients in there that 350 thousand of that can be available for down payment but I, I it doesn't explain that to me on, on that tax return you know if they, if they own certain percentages of, of, of apartment buildings there's rental income that can be used on that so the pre-approval process is, is very big on a foreign national for a domestic borrower I, I can sit down and in eight minutes I can tell you what they can afford the, you, the only way you're going to do it on a foreign is until you get when they, if that translated, and then I don't underwrite it. It's going to go to the A and B underwriters. I'll, I'll peruse it and try to give it an idea. I can get an idea and go, whoa, this is, this is kind of, and I've, I've gotten better in understanding where we are, but it's, it's understanding what can be used as income and what can't be used as income. A and B, again, the, the better rate, the lower the fees, their underwriters are going to pull those things apart. They know what they're looking for. So they know what all those individual things, they see that it's certified, translated. They'll know if this is a recurring debt, 
recurring income? Can it be traced? Can it be sourced? Boom, it may come back at 20% and they love it and you get 5% higher on uh, less down payment. But to narrow that number down, I don't have the ability to do that. Then that has to be done by the underwriters at A and B. If it's domestic, I can pull that credit report up. I can do it in eight minutes. I can tell you exactly what the rate's going to be. I can tell you which of the 39 investors are the best ones to use for that particular product. Boom, it's done. It's not that easy on the foreign national side, which is why institutions like C&D exist. They can have an idea of if they would go through or not, and then you can have a commitment letter and, and make it better. Then you have a, a higher chance of the loan than just a pre-approval. Pre-approval is just, let's say there's a client we know in Brazil, they don't put anything on the income tax. They have $10,000 a year on the income tax. You know they're not going to qualify. So it's just so you have an idea if they can start the process or not. Yes. Mm -hmm. Pre-approval and then commitment letter. Once I send add the document, he can work on that part. So pretty much when they have a commitment letter, um, their their deposit is. Well, it's it, they can still there's still a percentage of. The commitment letter is going to be coming from the investor, not me. So still not a hundred percent though, right? Um, the only way it won't be a hundred percent is if there's if they ask for additional Let's information. Let's say they get a loan and. Brazil, for example, because I have clients get a commitment letter and they get a hundred thousand loan in Brazil. That's going to change everything. If they die, if if something happens, if they lose their job or something that could affect that. Then yes. It's not guaranteed hundred percent. Nope. Until it closes, it's not a hundred percent guarantee. Depends on the, the yeah. deaths it's, and it's the income. It's going to depend on, on of that number if it's liquid that can be actually sourced. But more importantly, they're going to really try to narrow down what the monthly expenses are. And, and that's what's virtually impossible for me to, to translate. So if we get them translated, and they're versed at this, so they may look at things and understand that, that no, we wouldn't count this. Yes, we would count this. Boom, it comes back. Here's where it's at. Some of you guys are gonna go, are gonna find out, find out the easy way or the hard way, okay? Um, as far as when you start working with clients, so what happens when we first start working with clients, especially when we're brand new? Every client that says, "I want to buy a house," we get all excited. First thing we want to do is put them in our car and go drive them around and be a taxi driver, right? That's that's the first the first thing that comes to our minds. What we're doing with this, all these trainings that we're doing for you guys, is put in your head that. Remember the red velvet rope mentality that I keep talking to you guys about? That's what you always have to have. When you go to a place, you have the VIP area, right? There's a red velvet rope around the VIP, isn't there? So you're telling your client, listen, your client does, doesn't know better. Whatever you tell them, you follow. 98% of the time, there's always the, the knuckleheads out there. But if you tell them, listen, this is the process, then this is the process. Now, if you're not showing that to your client... How do you expect them to know? They're thinking they're coming in here, going to pick a property, and then they're going to start working on everybody else. So from the moment that we work on, that we get the lead, that we get the lead in, which we're going to go through this for the remaining 45 minutes that we have, from the moment you get the lead, you're positioning yourself as 
the expert as a financial, the trusted advisor, right? That we that we talked about as a financial advisor, the trusted advisor, and you showing them, listen, this is what's gonna happen going forward. You don't let them take the you know lead the way. You lead the way, they'll follow. Make sense? Because that's gonna avoid a lot of headache. I mean, Renato can tell you better. And he learned his lesson after what 20 or 30 emails with the client that didn't qualify, right? Didn't qualify. I don't know if it was a mortgage or the money over, sending the money over. It was, yeah, it was the sending of the money over. So imagine this. How frustrated would you be? How many hours would you say you invested, Renato? 20 plus hours. So 30 hours invested with the client. You didn't even take him, take him to see properties, right? He wasn't here, but you were going back and forth in email. So you invest 30 hours of your time. Is your time money? Is it precious? Time is money, right? So you invest 30 hours of your time. And then... Because you're excited. I mean, you want to help this guy. You want to sell him a house. You want to make a commission. We all do. But in the end of the day, he said, I'm ready to buy. Wonderful. Let me get you pre-qualified now. And then he gets a hold of Juliana or any other Money Corp girls. And she says, hey, Renato, he doesn't qualify to bring the money over. Well, he wasn't pre-qualified to bring over. He was, so nothing at all. So one, I mean, the other day we had on the, on the one-on-one, I had one of the one of the girls that was talking to me, and she asked me, "Hey, Diogo, you know the check how the um, on the mortgage checklist how we have the the steps, right? Like I told you guys, we have the steps that you should follow in order for you to make sure that you don't waste 30 hours like Renato did. And obviously, Renato learned his lesson, and and you know I don't want you guys to go through the same thing. But on the Realtors Info, and I want to show this to you guys real quick for those of you that don't know. Once again." Have this stuff memorized. If you ask me where a document is on here, I know it. It's not because I created it, because we keep shifting things around. But this is something you should get, keep checking on a daily, on a weekly basis at least. Because if you say, listen, if you're with the client and you need to pull something up, you know right where it's, where it's at. So current agent buying checklist. Look at what Desiree did for us. Everything is ready. There's no reason why you should got, you guys should be going through this if you're utilizing the tools that we're giving you. But look at this. So I had somebody the other day ask me, hey, Diogo, and obviously it was just a new person, so didn't know better, and that's okay. Listen, shouldn't this portion over here, the selling the property portion, be before the pre-qualification? Why not? And then I and then I told her the Renato's example. I said, well, how would you feel if you wasted, not if you wasted, if you invested 30 hours with the client of yours, so you're going through the, the, the selling the property, right? trying to find a property, submit an offer, do the whole thing with them, and then you find out that he's not going to be approved for the financing, he's not going to be approved to uh, to bring the money over. But I'm not going to find him. Do I just have a feeling that that's true? Or am I going to find him in June? Are we frustrated then? Is he going to be sad? Yes, he's going to be sad. About All the dreams and, and the house, he already saw himself inside the house, and then he said, I'm sorry. You just killed it. So Adelaide just, just made a great point. I mean, we're, we're talking about agents, right? I mean, we invest in our time and not getting a return on our investment. But you got a great point. Imagine, so what she's saying is, imagine the client. Buying a house here is an emotional decision. It's not just logic. You understand how sales work, right? People buy on emotion, they justify with logic. But especially when it comes to something like this, I mean, their heart is in it. Imagine you go to the house. You, I mean, they fall in love with it. They're, they already see themselves living there or having spending their vacation there. And all of a sudden, you say, listen, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Baya, I'm very sorry, but um, you're not going to qualify to bring the money. You're not going to qualify for the financing. Well, how, how much of a professional are you? You didn't do your job right. That's why we have, and we're going to keep adding and adding and adding because we want to make sure that you guys have every single piece of tool that you need in order to make this work. Thank <laughs> you.